Hello to Darkness344. Today I'm really <coughs> going to be showing off my redstone computer. So, this is a fairly large computer and I might have shown that, I think I showed this off in my last video of, a bit of this off in my last video of this, this the RAM cell video, and it's pretty big. <laughs> but, so, functions, it's a 5-bit computer and it has most of your standard ALU, so add, subtract, and, or, not, XOR, shift left and shift right, and it's fully programmable, which means you can write any program you want, well, pretty much any program you want, that works with it anyway, so you have, you have your operation line, your d main data bus line, as I call it, you have your save to RAM cells, like read and write, read, write, to RAM cells, whichever RAM cell you specify by these, this binary, the three bit binary number. Then you have your display line, which updates to the display register, so updates it to the next one. Program running, which turns, program running, program finished. They turn on the program lights, which I'll show you. Input to AOU A and B, which update the AOU register. And those lights are here, they just turn these on. It's nothing special just to help debuggers and stuff. And you have your like reset RAM cycle clock, which just helps you memorize. So I've recorded this video several times now because there's been a few bug fixes. So yeah, like one of the issues that I've been having is with these lines here, since I've been doing this to save a bit of space, like, because instead of, normally most people would just put a repeater here, but if you put blocks here, it, it like, lengthens the signal by two, just the tiniest bit, because of the blocks. But one thing, these repeaters have been turning on, even if that's off, for, I don't know why, and then you have to go like that to update it, but, just a small problem, I don't really know how to fix that, maybe you could put blocks underneath, like, like this, but it doesn't matter too much, as long as you make sure to make sure everything's off when you log out should all work so uh, this video is going to be an explanation showing out all the different parts and stuff and showing off a basic well i say basic i say well just a standard program that you can run on this an example of what you can do basically it only shows off addition and some other features but and i haven't really tested the other features yet but they should all work i think they should work anyway and it's a fairly nice program as a hello world kind of starter program on a redstone computer so it's the fibonacci sequence and my dad actually wrote this because i do not have big brain enough to write a program like this yeah i made it but i can't write programs for it because i'm stupid but it's a pretty simple program so it's on the default core which is zero so this one down here and we're going to turn on the clock and uh, it should go 0, uh, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 8 plus 5, 13, uh, 13 plus 8, 21 and uh, yeah I think that's about it because the next number is 34 and as you can see it's already gone to 1. The next number is 34 and it can't go over 34 because it's only a 5 bit com computer so it only goes up to 31. So of course this is using my binary coded decimal display. I've cut out a big section because it the tens column only goes up to 30, so you have 0, 1, 2, 3. And here's your input, of course, in binary coded decimal. And this is binary to binary coded decimal uh, converter, which I may show how to build in a future video, but I have shown this driver off in a previous video. If you want a good in-depth tutorial, I suggest watching Benny's Cube tutorial. It's a Java edition, but it'll still work on Bedrock edition. As This is my own design, by the way, but it's pretty much the same thing. So, all it, this uses the double-double method. Actually, I should, I should really show the program working, shouldn't I? Oh, and it's already at 5. I'll show off the program working. So, so 5 plus 3, because the previous number was 3, it should go to 8 next. So, it takes a bit of time because of the clock. Eight, yeah. Uh, the display is kind of weird. It flickers sometimes, but that's because of these decoders. They have repeats and a bit of delay. 
and after it eight it should go to thirteen. The only way to fix that, as you can see, thirteen. Only way to fix that is put pistons down here or like signal blockers that only turn it on when it's all done. So yeah, you could implement that to your clock cycle. And as I say, this computer still has a few bugs, but 21, as you can see. And then it should go to 18, I think, because it goes over the... Over, it overflows to data limit. So, 18, yeah, because that's pretty much what it is in binary. Like, so 34. 34 minus... Uh, hang on, this goes up to 16, I think. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So 32. So say 32 is here. Then that's... You know what? Never mind. I'll figure it out later. But yeah, it just goes to 18 because it's missing a bit. So yeah. And then... So I'll show this off this video. And next video I do, I'll show how to program it. And I'll also have a well download to this. It's not fully finished like this display is not working and stuff yet because it really doesn't do much this was meant to be the user input so if you had a program saying oh I want I need the user input to function then it doesn't work because it hasn't been wired up properly yet as you can see I may fix that in a future version but yeah as I say it will be a future version so at the moment you can safely say this can be walled off and these are your only features so you have choose your call choose your program uh, clock on off reset display which will just reset the display registers to zero uh, clock cycle counter uh, reset all RAM cycle clock so you can reset all RAM you can also cycle clock this is synchronized with the time it gets to there because of repeaters being stupid and taking delay and you have your program one, program finished lines. So, yeah, I'll be showing this off this video. So I've already shown these. Uh, what we have over here, this is a D flip flop, which is your program register. It pretty much just updates whenever you send a line down. So this line over here loops all the way down to, if I can get down here, all the way down to your uh, display. And this pretty much just updates it and updates it to whatever's on the main data bus which is this pink line over here so as i've shown already it goes through here this travels all the way this way goes down this orange line which i'll show in a minute also gets inputted by this line over here and goes right into the ram don't ask me why i have this this actually no this is for the ram reset the entire reset i'll show you that in a minute so it goes into the RAM and just goes all the way down to there where it ends. It only enters the RAM if the re if the write function is on. And it does that by just updating the flip the D flip flops. And then it goes back down that way. Or oh, out of the RAM into all the way around back in the RAM outputs right back into the line again. So Yeah. And I have shown this RAM off in a previous video. But the way the entire RAM reset works is it lifts up these. So if there is any data coming in, it won't display. Lifts up these and it updates all the display lines because all these would be zero if these are lifted up because there's no input. And then, so this would all be zero. It's knotted by the way because of how it works. And so it would all be updated to zero. And oh, one thing that I think I forgot to mention was that in the RAM video is that you actually need a one tick pulse for it to update properly without any bugs. And that's just a redstone torch leading into another redstone torch here like this with a repeat, two repeaters, one set on four ticks, one set on one tick, so that's five ticks. Uh, there's another way with pistons and falling sand, but these I guess are more stable because it's only a thing. But yeah, and I don't think they will lag out with any like piston ticks and stuff. So yeah, that's that section of the calculator. Then you have this yellow line, which is the program line, which just shows which one to use. So it says, oh, say I want to subtract this 
the subtract line on this would be on. I could have done this in binary, it would have been much smaller and compact, like I did with the CPU line. This is free and it goes, this is three bits and it can go up to eight. I've only done, s yeah, it can go up to eight, but, and yeah, there's four, eight of these, so I could have done a three bit line for this, but oh well, I didn't really think of that. And I did build this, this was the first thing that I built, the ALU, and it is massive, I could have reduced it massively, but it does look alright, so. Yeah, this is more of a concept calculator. Then you have the clock, which just uh, goes, is a clock, basically. Can't really describe anything else, it just updates the program counter, which is over here. And this is a really cool program counter because it isn't just, it goes duh, 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 and all the way back, duh, duh, duh. This is a clever one because you can say, oh, I want to go to line 7 from line 0. So line 0 is your starting line always. And say from line 0, I want to go to line 0. You just put line 7 even. You just go put line 7 in on binary, which would be 0, 1, 1, 1. And it'll jump to line 7. But this is even cleverer because you could do loops. So you can go from line zero, I want to go back to line, z from line seven, I want to go back to line one. And then from line one, I want to go back to line seven again. And then it will loop. The way to stop this program from looping on the last line, because if you leave the last line blank, it will always go back to zero because zero is blank. So it will go back to zero. So you just put the same, say I am on line five, and I want it to stop looping, you just put line 5 on line 5 again. So it'll always just jump back to the same line and it won't update. Then you have the ALU registers, which are pretty much the same as the display registers. They just get updated when you send the update command. And this orange line here. So there's two orange lines and they do they just lead into the ALU. So one goes from the main C from the CPU line just straight into the ALU, and the other one goes from the RAM line into the ALU. Theoretically, you can turn this off without any too much effects, but it will slow the computer down a bit because the tiniest bit because this RAM line eventually does go back into this line. It goes all the way around, all the way back into here, but it's slow, so I advise keeping this on for speed and efficiency. And then you have this pink line. This pink line is the output of the AOU. This AOU works weird. Well, I say weird, yeah. Because what happens is you can input the numbers and it will do all the calculations. So it will do add, subtract, uh, you know, and, or, I don't even, yeah, or uh, not, x, or shift left and shift right. It will do all the operations at once, but it will only send the answer if you say, oh, I want the operation add. So if I say the operation add, which I think is uh, this one over here, then it will say, oh, operation add, turn it on. And it will just lift up this and send the output out of what your number was. And I sh I think I'll show you the Fibonacci sequence, which is pretty cool. Then what else do we have? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. These are, there's eight of these, so you can put several programs on it. Of course, this one's the fastest because it doesn't have any repeaters in a massive tower. And I could have made this a staircase, I think I've already said this, but torches were smaller. This line also comes out from RAM, but yeah, this line comes out from RAM and goes to display. The only way to write to display is to read from RAM. It's sad, but I don't actually have too much space here. I could probably go take it from this side and go that way. But I can't really be bothered. Maybe in a future version, that could be cool. So yeah, I guess, yeah, this is a pretty cool computer that I built. And next video that I will make, I will release the world download. Maybe with a few changes to this, maybe not, probably not, because I'm kind of burnt out after this. But, yeah, and I'll probably only be uploading once a week or once every other week from now on, because, yeah, I've been kind of a bit burnt out from this, making this massive computer project. But yeah. So next video that I up upload will show how to program this because it could be really cool if you know how to program this. So you can write your own programs to add numbers or subtract numbers or like Fibonacci sequence or whatever you want to do. And so next program, yep. So next 
video I show how to do this and I'll also leave a world download to this computer. This video I will not because, uh, yeah, to make you click on the next video. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe and I am out. Hope you enjoyed this video.